assalamu alaikum dear students uh, welcome to 10 film technology course uh, lecture number two i'm dr Purvez Ahmed. Uh, and this section we are trying to uh, uh, have an introduction of different parts of the uh, thin film course so uh, in this particular lectures uh, we will try uh, to understand some of the typical steps and walls and making uh, thin films uh, so what actually we have uh, when we are trying to deposit in thin film, so first of all, uh, we have the emission of particles uh, from a source. Uh, I mean, it's how we emit the particle from a source. Uh, so this is normally done uh, uh, we are heating uh, by this, uh, heating the source materials. Uh, uh, similarly, we can do it by uh, applying the, the high voltage. And then we have the transport of the particles to the substrate. I mean, uh, these are the step and walls and uh, making a thin film. I mean, first of all, we have emission of particle from the source, which can be done by applying heat or high voltage. And then uh, we're trying uh, to have the transport of the particle to the substrate. And, and uh, where, uh, uh, I mean, uh, what actually we do at the substrate? Uh, at the substrate, uh, we're trying to have a condensation of the particles. So how do they uh, condense? I mean, this is the questions which is not very easy to answer. I mean, uh, uh, these questions uh, might be arises uh, whenever we, we have discussions for the deposition of the thin film. And we will try your best to answer these questions as long as it's necessary. So first of all, we will try to explain all these stepwise sample models. Uh, we have a sample model that is one, one of our published paper. Uh, from, uh, I mean, one of the very reputed journals uh, uh, that is published by elsewhere in the material science and semiconductor process. So, first of all, we have what we have uh, the emission of the particles. That is, we have the precursors. So, what actually we do uh, with these precursors, we heated uh, uh, these precursors to a temperature that is up to 12. Uh, 1200 degrees centigrade. I mean that we do normally in a, a quartz tube of furnace. So this is the first step. Uh, when we heat uh, these precursor, so that's been converted into the viper pumps. Uh, I mean that this is the step that where we are saying that it's emission of the particle from the source. So this is the source. When we heat this source, that is uh, uh, beyond 1000 degrees centigrade or up to 1200 degrees centigrade. Uh, so we have the emission of the particles. Uh, from this source, we have the emission of particles. Uh, so when we have the particles, so what actually we do with the particles? Uh, the second step is trans uh, transport of the particle to the substrate. So uh, then we're trying to transport uh, these particles to the substrate. Here we have the substrate, the silicons. Uh, uh, here we have the substrate. I mean, here you can see that these are the uh, the source. We we heat. Uh, we heat it uh, 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 when we heat it. So the the particles emitted from it and uh, and the vapor pump. So then the second step is uh, transport of the particle to the substrate. So we transport the S pump vapor particles. That is a hexagonal boron nitride species and the vapor pump to the silicon uh, substrate. So the third step is condensation of particle and substrate. So here you can see uh, uh, we have the nucleation uh, sites. We have the nucleation sites on the, uh, the substrate. So these particles, uh, they are being organ carried to the substrate and uh, where they are uh, deposited and uh, being condensed in the form of a thin film. I mean, you can see the uh, you can see the process by yourself. Let me repeat it again. First, at first step, that is emission of particle from the source. We have the source as a precursor materials. That is boron, magnesium oxide, and uh, uh, iron oxides. So what actually we do? We heat up to a certain temperature that is from thousand to twelve hundred degrees centigrade. So what actually happens? We convert them into uh, the particles that is uh, I mean it's in a vapor phase so after that what actually happens the second step is transportation of the particle to the substrate uh, which we normally do here in this particular case where the argon uh, where the argon flow so argon gas flow it transport these particles to the substrate so there on the substrate the third step is being performed that is condensation of particles uh, in the form of boron nitride uh, nanotube. So these are the, all the typical steps 
uh, that's been involved and the deposition of thin film. And we remember that we, we have to explain uh, this again uh, when, we, uh, when we were trying to, uh, I mean, uh, discuss the deposition, different deposition techniques uh, and the thin film deposition uh, sections. So now uh, you know that all of you uh, belongs to uh, the physics. I mean, all of you are the, the students of the physics. So normally the people that are asking the questions that what is the physics in all this? I mean, so, uh, what is the physics uh, and thin film technology? So uh, you people have studied different kind of uh, uh, physics courses. Uh, so uh, we will discuss just a few of them. Uh, I mean, the most relevant fonts, we will take their example and we will deal that uh, what sort of the physics, uh, I mean, that we are utilizing from those uh, different branches of physics. So, first we take the example of thermodynamics and kinetics. So, uh, let me explain that, uh, I mean, what are the things that we utilize from thermodynamics and kinetics. So, you know that. Uh, the first concept, the, the first half that we take from the thermodynamics and kinetics, uh, that is uh, phase transitions, uh, that is, uh, and these sections, uh, we're trying to uh, have uh, or to utilize the concept from the thermodynamics and kinetics, that is, uh, we learn how to condense a gas to hard the solid. I mean, these are the concepts that we utilize from the uh, thermodynamics. And similarly, from these sections, uh, uh, we get the information or we get the, the knowledge uh, about the uh, nucleations. I mean, we learn that how, uh, I mean, the nucleations happen, that is how we heat the materials and after being heated, how, uh, I mean, uh, uh, the kinetics uh, that have been involved uh, to do the rest of the process. And then uh, we study about the growth kinetics and, uh, I mean, just like you can, you can uh, have by, uh, I mean, by the terminologies, that is, uh, I mean, so we can't do it without uh, thermodynamics. Uh, then uh, we perform the activated process, and uh, you know that all these activated processes belong to thermodynamics and uh, kinetics. Uh, and activated process, uh, we do the uh, uh, desorptions, uh, so desorption again belongs to thermodynamics. Uh, we do the diffusions, again, it's the same process. So, uh, I mean, it's allow the process. Uh, uh, allow for uh, allow processes and allow phases. So then we have a well-known branch of physics uh, that we call uh, solid-state physics. So uh, what we get from solid-state physics uh, when we are studying the course uh, thin film technology. So from solid-state physics, we learn about uh, crystallography. That is, uh, in thin film technology, we utilize the concept of uh, uh, crystallography. And you know that the, 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 the terms, uh, the, the concept of crystallography belong to solid state physics. Similarly, we uh, studied about the defect and the 10 films. So remember that the concept of defects is again come from the solid state physics. Then we study about the bonding and again the bonding belong to solid state physics. Uh, uh, then we have another branch of physics uh, that we call a well known and most popular uh, branch of physics that is uh, electricity and, magn and magnetism. Uh, so what we get for, uh, I mean, what we get uh, from electricity and magnetism, uh, actually from, without this course, we, we won't be able to uh, test the conductivity or resistivity of the thin film. So we take help uh, by utilizing the concept of electricity and magnetism, and we're trying to understand uh, the conductivity or resistivity of our uh, grown uh, thin films. Uh, similarly, by utilizing the concept uh, of electricity and magnetism, we study the magnetic properties of the s synthesized magnetic film. And you know that we have another branch of physics, well-known branch of physics that we call uh, mechanics. So we also utilize the concept from the mechanics. Uh, that is, we utilize the concept of stress and film. I mean, uh, uh, whenever we, uh, we have to study the stress and then film. So for that, we have to utilize uh, the concept from uh, mechanics. Uh, and uh, along with that, we utilize uh, the concept of fraction and wear uh, from mechanics in order to understand that uh, and thin film technology. So these are the well-known physics uh, that's been involved uh, in the process of thin film uh, technology. So I mean, so, uh, as a physicist, you all should be happy that uh, thin film technology is nothing more than all the physics or uh, the, the chemistry. I mean, the same way 
or we have uh, physics, uh, I mean along with that we, we, are, we can also have uh, some sort of the chemistry uh, which is equally involves uh, in thin film uh, technology. Uh, so uh, let's come some of the uh, deposition techniques and deposition techniques whenever we talk about uh, thin film deposition so, so there is a well known techniques uh, about the depositions uh, that we call uh, chemical vapor deposition which in short we write uh, CVD and it's well understood uh, among the people who are working in the field of nanotechnology or material science. So what is CVD or what is uh, chemical vapor depositions uh, let me explain again we have to study this technique and more and more details in the coming lecture I mean we have uh, we rather have a specific uh, a section of this course where we will study uh, or we will do the full discussion about uh, uh, the depositions, then film deposition technique. But here so we are just giving an introduction of these technique. So uh, what we have uh, in chemical vapor depositions or what is the chemical vapor deposition? So this is uh, something like a formal, uh, a very formal discussion taking from the book. Uh, and this we say that gaseous compounds I mean this is the basic mechanisms uh, or something like you can say that are uh, definitions for the chemical vapor depositions. Mm -hmm. So what actually happen in chemical vapor depositions uh, we have gaseous compounds and those gaseous compounds react to form a dense layer on a heated substrate. I mean this is the process the CVD process uh, we are defining and uh, are explaining in a formal way. So the most widely deposited uh, wear resistant coatings are titanium carbide, titanium nitride, uh, chromium carbide and aluminium. I mean these are the most widely deposited wear resistance coating. So deposition temperatures are generally in the range of 800 to 1000 degrees centigrade. Uh, so what I actually do is uh, restrict the range of the materials which can be uh, coated and can lead to uh, component distortions. So uh, thickness uh, of the materials uh, as we already mentioned thickness are limited to about uh, ten, uh, 10 millimeters uh, due to the thermal expansions uh, mismatch stresses uh, which develop on cooling uh, which also restrict uh, the coating of sharp edge uh, component. So this is I mean something short uh, very formal discussion is about uh, chemical vapor depositions. So uh, there are, I mean, whatever the technique we are studying, as we mentioned in the, in the last lectures, uh, it has advantages and along with that it has disadvantages. So what are the advantages of the uh, CVD techniques? So CVD techniques, uh, with the help of this technique, we can do high, uh, I mean, these techniques uh, have high coating hardness. Uh, it has good, uh, good additions, uh, which means that the coating is not too thick. Similarly, good uh, throwing power that is uh, uniformity of the, uh, the coating. I mean, these are some of the advantages of the CVD techniques. Uh, along with that, we have some of the disadvantages from uh, this particular technique, and these are a high temperature process, uh, so which normally result in distortions. Uh, sharp edge coating is a difficult, that is, thermal expansion mismatches uh, stretches. I mean, uh, when we do have, uh, do have this. So as a result, we can have thermal expansion match masses and stresses and the synthesized thin film. So limited range of the material can be coated. I mean, uh, this is the technique where we can do a very limited range of the materials. Uh, I mean, especially for the uh, coating uh, process. And uh, environmental concern about the process cases. I mean, you know that different kind of gases that can be utilized uh, during the CVD technique. So this can really lead to some uh, I mean so some of the very serious information uh, environmental concerns. So these are the points which should be addressed uh, whenever uh, one of you or a few of you trying to utilize the CVD technique. So that should have a close look on the advantages and disadvantages of the techniques. Uh, along with the chemical vapor deposition, we have another technique which is called, I mean it's a very widely used technique, it's called physical vapor depositions, which in short we can write uh, PVD. Uh, so uh, what is PVD? Uh, PVD is basically a low pressure coating uh, process in which the coating flux is produced by a physical process. Uh, 
I mean, this, this is something like uh, a formal, just like we have a CVD, so it's like a formal introductions for uh, the PVD, that is uh, physical warfare depositions. I mean, uh, what we have, we have a low pressure coating process and which the coating flux is produced by a physical process. So, uh, there are two main types of this technique. That is the first we call evaporations and the second is called sputtering. I mean, physical vapor deposition is common uh, two types. The first is evaporations and the second is sputtering. We remember that if uh, evaporation is further divided into sub techniques or subsections and similarly the, uh, the sputtering is divided into different sputtering uh, techniques uh, depend upon the applied voltage and others, uh, I mean uh, other parameters. So each techniques uh, they, they have, uh, I mean they are further divided into uh, sub techniques. So uh, in both cases, I mean it's irrespective of whether it's uh, evaporations, uh, it is a sputtering, in both cases the source material is a solid. I mean it's if you have the evaporation process or you have a sputtering process, so the source material that we will try to utilize uh, in this particular technique will be a solid, uh, uh, will be a metals or ceramic material. So what we have, a reactive gas may be used in the deposition chamber to deposit uh, compound coating from an elemental source or maintain the stoichiometry of coating from the compound source. So typical uh, coating range uh, or typical coating thickness range from 1 to 10 uh, millimeters for wear resistant coating. I mean you know that normally we do the coating for uh, different purposes. So here's we are trying to specify the typical coating thickness ranges from 1 to 10 uh, millimeters for wear resistant coating. So though thinner layers are used in microelectronics and thicker layers are used for high temperature corrosion protections of gas turbines components. I mean it depends upon the coating basically depend upon the particular application. I mean it's, uh, what are the specific application you have in your mind. So with respect to that you specified the range of the coating uh, regarding that particular applications in your mind. So just like the CVD, the PVD also has uh, some of the advantages that is, it's excellent uh, process that can easily be controlled. I mean, uh, we can say that excellent process controls, uh, low depositions uh, temperature. I mean, uh, in this temperature, we don't need to go to higher temperature just like uh, we have in case of CVD. That is, we have to go for 12, uh, uh, up to 1200 degrees centigrade. So, uh, I mean, in comparison to that, it's uh, low depositions. Uh, this technique requires a low temperature for the depositions. Uh, as a result, we have dense adherent, uh, uh, adherent coating. Uh, elementally, I mean, we can do the coating or the depositions that might be from, uh, I mean, the, the coating can be elemental alloy and compound coating. I mean, it's all these coating that they are possible uh, with the help of. Uh, uh, PVD techniques. Uh, so what are the advantages that normally uh, one can have from the PVD? So vacuum process with high capital cost, I mean, uh, I mean whenever you, you're trying to apply uh, evaporation setup or you have a sputtering process or sputtering uh, setup. So these kind of process they are normally being utilized in a very high vacuum. So uh, I mean uh, the vacuum process with the high capital cost, I mean uh, normally we have to utilize the vacuum pumps, vacuum gauges. So uh, I mean and uh, along with that we can also, we also utilizing so many other things. So uh, that's why we are saying that it's come one of the uh, disadvantage of the uh, the process, the PDV process that is vacuum uh, process with high capital cost, uh, limited component size uh, treatables. Uh, relatively low coating rates as compared to CVD, uh, poor throwing power without manipulations of the uh, components. So uh, these are basically the advantages and disadvantages of the physical vapor depositions. So uh, as we mentioned, uh, uh, physical vapor depositions has uh, uh, two main types that is evaporations and uh, sputtering. So let uh, 
have a brief discussion about these two frosts. Let us first take the, uh, the frosts that is the evaporation frosts. So, what actually we have uh, in the uh, evaporation frosts, uh, in this kind of frosts, the vapor pressures of most material increases with the temperature and if it exceeds the ambient pressures, the material will rapidly evaporate into the environment. Again, I am describing that is something like a more formal discussions, I mean as uh, just like we have in the book. Uh, so, we, we are explaining it in a more standard way. I mean we will have further discussion in the coming lectures. So, in a coating chamber, the pressure is reduced and the source materials heated until a desired vapor flux is maintained which is controlled by the source materials. So, the source temperature and the system uh, pressures. I mean this is the more formal way uh, for carrying out the evaporation uh, process. So, in this kind of uh, techniques, heating can be performed in uh, several ways just like we mentioned in the subsidiary. So, here in this particular case, uh, we can do, uh, we can perform the heating by several ways. Uh, that is, uh, we can do the heating via resistive heatings. Uh, for example, aluminum evaporation is from titanium boride board. Uh, we can have electron beam evaporations, for example, metals such as uh, tungsten. Uh, similarly, we can have uh, cathodic uh, arc evaporations. Uh, an example of that is titanium evaporations for titanium nitride coating. Uh, disadvantages of the evaporation process include uh, the vapor pressure of different metals uh, vary over several orders of magnitude. So, it is difficult to evaporate alive and control compositions. Along with that, uh, the airs deposited evaporatic coating are forest due to the lamatic mobility of the coating atom on the component surface. So, this can be controlled uh, by heating or ion plating. I mean that uh, that we will have to check, uh, that we will have to see and the, uh, I mean the in the later sections when we discuss the PVD in full detail that is and then film deposition sections. Uh, Spatter from localized boiling can lead to a droplet uh, formations which affect coating performance. So, this is uh, I mean this is for the evaporations uh, I mean which is first uh, which is uh, one of the first techniques of in the uh, PVD. So, the second uh, techniques in the PVD come in the form of sputtering process. So, what actually we have in the sputtering process. So, here you can see this is the man mechanism or the man happening. I mean it is the man side up for the sputtering process. We have a source target and we have a substrate. Uh, both these uh, we have connect with the battery. So, what actually we have, uh, I mean, so how the frost is uh, happening, we have to discuss this in detail. But let us first uh, do some formal discussion that we have a sputtering process, and these uh, sputtering process basically, uh, I mean, uh, uh, we have main sputtering of uh, frosts, uh, but these uh, sputtering process come mainly in two types that is we have DC diode sputtering uh, and the DC diode sputtering basically come for uh, conducting targets and along with that we have RF sputtering and RF sputtering mainly come for uh, insulating target. So, what actually happened I mean the questions uh, we discuss about uh, I mean uh, this mechanism I mean which we explain here with the help of these diagrams. I mean we, we saying that the things they are happening automatically here. So, how we describe the fro these process. So, what actually we have I mean again it is a, it's a formal discussions just like we have inside a book. Uh, I mean uh, what actually happened here when energetic ion strike at surface. So, materials is ejected by the transfer of momentum from the ion to the target atoms. So, here we say that we utilize argon gas, uh, I mean this argon gas we, we first of all we ionize it. So, we have a plasma of uh, argon ions and electron. So, these argon ions they are accelerated toward the target here just like you can see it is the argon, this is the argon ion and this is accelerated toward the target. I mean here is again 
is the organ and isolated uh, towards the target. So when it reached to the target, so what actually happens? Uh, I mean, the material, the target material, is ejected by what? By transfer of momentum from the ions to the target. I mean, these ions they have a certain momentum, and these momentums uh, is being transferred to the source, and as a result, I mean, the source material is ejected like akin to ballot ball collision at the atomic scale. So uh, this can be uh, conventionally achieved and a low pressure glow or discharge of an inert gas such as argon. I mean, you can see it here. So what we have next, I mean, uh, in such a process, uh, the target material is met uh, the cathode. I mean, this is the target material. Uh, it is have met the cathode and is raised to a potential of several hundred volt. I mean, here you can see that. I mean, this is the source target and it is being made as a cathode and it's raised to a potential of several hundred volts. So, electron leaving the cathode stream out into uh, the gas space uh, where they can impact with the organ atoms, ionizing them. The positively charged argon is then accelerated to the cathode, I mean, which you can see it here, uh, where it impact and sputter away the materials. I mean, first we have ionization of the argon gas, and then the argon ion is accelerated toward the target, and it sputter the target atoms, uh, sputter the target material. So, what we have when we sputter, uh, I mean, when we sputter the target, so what will, uh, what happen next? The sputter yields of different elements for given impact conditions uh, do not vary very much. So, target alike composition can be maintained and the coding, except in case uh, where there are large differences in atomic weight of the alloy constituents. So, uh, the coding red scales with the electrical power used to uh, sustain the discharge. The coating rate also depends on the uh, plasma density. Uh, so techniques uh, to increase this, for example, by uh, confining the electrons close to the target using magnets will increase the coating rate. So however, as much as 95% of the power is dissipated as a heat and the target, so good coding is essential. I mean, so it's the, the sample process that uh, we, we have the target, I mean, uh, we have the target as a cathode uh, and uh, the substrate uh, as an anode. So we introduce the argon gas. So uh, when we apply the electrical discharge, so it ionizes the, uh, the argon gas, I mean, the form of ion and el electrons. So the, the, the ion, the organ ions, they're accelerated towards, with the help, uh, help of the applied voltage, they are accelerated toward the, uh, the source target, where they transfer the momentum to the source target, whereby it's uh, ejected or sputter uh, the target's uh, atoms. So the sputter atoms, they are accelerated toward the target, uh, uh, I mean, uh, uh, they're accelerated toward the substrate, where they are being deposited in the form of a uh, thin film. I mean, this is uh, uh, very short. Uh, I mean, uh, you can say the conclusion of the uh, sputtering process. So this is all we have uh, for this sections. Thank you very much for our, our watching. Uh, see you in the coming lectures for more detail about uh, thin film technology. Till then, bye bye.